Hey guys, um, so these videos, or maybe it'll end up just being one, is really geared towards um, finishing touches in your Unreal Engine 4 scenes. Um, so we'll be talking about um, just adding a little bit more atmosphere to your scenes. Um, hopefully you're making little sketches or at least have an idea of what you want your final scenes to start looking like. Um, to, to sort of further enhance the, um, the illusion of, of whatever it is you're going for. We're gonna look back at the Brazil example that I had started with the cinematics. And I'm gonna go through what I did in this scene to um, sort of further enhance the scene from the very um, basic block out scene that, that we had started with. And so, um, you know, I had something like this where I just had a basic cylinder and I kind of applied a random material to it. I wasn't concerned with any of the details initially. I was just blocking things out, just getting the scale right, et cetera, et cetera. Found a Sketchfab asset um, dentist chair, which, which I liked and, you know, started playing around with some basic lighting, um, playing with uh, some of the post-processing on the camera, getting like a little lens flare and this, this bloom effect. Um, and to really uh, try to capture the lighting um, that comes from this original uh, scene from the movie. Um, and here are some of the concept drawings that were done. And then, you know, there are some images of, um, or ideas of, of what the characters in the scene might start to look like. Um, the protagonist is being tortured and has like this weird contraction on, on his head. So I might try to figure that out. Um, the torturer is, you know, in a lab coat wearing a mask. So um, I might try to capture some of those things. And, you know, they're, they're like soldiers and things like that in the scene. So I might begin to do that as well. So if we look here, the, the doctor is coming in with a couple of guards. And, and so I might try to recreate some of those scenes as part of my cinematic. Um, as I was working, um, I just made sure to draw or sketch ideas down so I can, um, you know, give myself uh, like an objective. Um, so I drew some wires, there's like the cone of light, um, that volumetric light ray that comes from the, um, from the lamp overhead that I wanted to capture. And we talked about that a little bit um, using the exponential height fog. Um, and there are cheaper ways of doing that, and I'll show you that as well. Um, but the exponential light fog should work just fine. Um, there's like a, a rail here, like a almost like a like train tracks, but more for like carts and things. So I grabbed some of those things from Quixel, and then just sort of drawing out, you know, having like cables and stuff strewn about. And this is really just taken from from like this image here, where you see like. Uh, these like power cables or whatever these cables might be for um, that, you know, connect to the torture devices, right? And so just, again, further adding character um, and atmosphere into the scene. And you know, here you can see that there are these rails. The platform has like a very plasticky feel to it. So, you know, I just made something a little bit more industrial looking. Um, and then, you know, I found these other images of like concrete silos um, I think these are from um, a film called Homo Sapiens, um, which is about like these very dramatic architectural spaces that are you know, often in disrepair. Um, so anyway, you know, these are inspiration for, um, for how I wanted to characterize the scene. And of course, the, the film itself starts to um, give us some of that. And then I went into uh, uh, textures.com and found a series of these concrete uh, walls. These are essentially photographs that someone took of um, kind of like a what appears to be like a CMU type wall um, that has some nice like staining and, and, and pop marks and things like that or pop marks. And then I took him into materialize and started like pulling out maps and we went through this last week. Um, so there's a height map diffuse map, which is just the image itself, and then generating normal maps to, you know, try to pull out some of this, uh, uh, some of the, the visual data as like three dimensional lighting data. And then I started applying it to my surface 
And so here, the center uh, uh, block here um, has normal map applied, and then the other ones don't. And so just really trying to test out in Unreal Engine um, what this final wall texture material should really start to look like. And so, you know, this has normal map applied. And I actually really didn't like how much uh, of the lighting effect that the normal map was having. So I think I just ended up leaving it fairly flat. OK. Um, and so you can, you know, experiment with that as you, as you um, find textures and, and try to really capture uh, the, the, the look and feel of things as, you, as you're, as you're um, aiming or shooting towards the, the targets that you've established. And so this is kind of like close to my final lighting scene where I have the material applied. I wanted this highlight up here. So I added some lights up above to, to kind of capture the feel of this. Um, here you have a lot more contrast, but this, this was a lot more subtle and it really picks up on the textures of the concrete wall. And so this is essentially what I ended up with. I improved upon the 3D model. So I you know, just did a little bit more uh, 3DS Max work to kind of take my basic, um, uh, my, my, my basic block out scene and starting to add a little bit more detail to it. Um, again, based on what I see here. So here you have like these three steel um, beams you have like this kind of mesh work underneath and this platform is suspended and you know you don't it looks like you don't want to fall off of it um and then here you can kind of see like there are these struts that hold up these um these walkways and um yeah that's pretty much uh i'm just replicating the scene more or less right and then the wires and the cables i found um a 3ds max animation tutorial that um, takes physics and applies actually it's using a cloth dynamic applied to like a cylindrical object and then it just sort of applies gravity and it, it like gets slung and wrapped around these um, uh, digital uh, geometries to kind of get that kind of loose hanging wire effect <clears throat> so if you go into the 3d uh sorry um the Unreal Engine scene, um, you know, we can see that here, here is a wire, right? This is just a, a, a static mesh that I then imported from um, 3ds Max, so export as a FBX file and, and bringing it in to Unreal Engine. Um, and then, <clears throat> I don't even know if this has a material assigned to it. It's just the grid material. So there literally has no material, but you know, because it's so small in the scene, it really doesn't matter. And then the wire ends here. So I found like a little electric electrical box from, from Quixel, uh, Quixel Bridge. Um, um, I found a little 3D asset for that. And some, I think this is like a military, uh, some sort of a military prop. So just things that look like they would appropriately fit in the scene. I found like a sketch fab uh, uh, floor lamp which I'm using for the overhead. And I applied my emissive material and a spotlight. <clears throat> so if I hit G to toggle game mode off, you can see that there's my spotlight, um, it's, you know, lighting my dentist chair. And this dentist chair came with a little extra light. So I, you know, went ahead and added another light to that, right? So just, you know, building out the scene, um, you know, applying a material to my platform uh, this material comes directly from Quixel Bridge. Um, adding my train track material or sorry, train track period. Um, this <clears throat> is like, if I raise this up, you'll see that it's just like a railroad track that I found also on Quixel Bridge. Um, and I just, you know, duplicated it. And then I found uh, a concrete modular uh, or a modular concrete median also from Quixel and just kind of scaled it so it fit in between my, my rails. And then these are just concrete curves also found on Quixel. And I just like copied them over and over again. So you can see 
there's just <clears throat> multiple versions of the same thing. And then here I just applied a door image onto um, my concrete texture in Photoshop and just added a door through in a couple of bollards also found from Quixel and some other props and things like that. And I made these wires that go around the perimeter of my silo um, in 3ds max or you could use rhino just as easily to get something like that <clears throat> and then you can see the structure of the, the mesh below that i just applied a rusty uh, material to and then just added a little bit of detail like these like bolt bolted plates and then just adding um, it's kind of like a w section or i-beam profile um, and applying a, a, a rust material to that just to, you know, make it look very old and industrially, uh, if that's a word. <clears throat> and this is like my original platform. So I just added this on top of that. So you can just, um, you know, just layering uh, some of these things on top of um, the block out, the original block out scene. And then I threw in this giant glowing orb on the bottom of it, just because it gives it a nice little uh, lighting effect um, from below. Um, it's not part of the original scene, but you know, the the space below, since I put so much work into, well, it's not a ton of work, but I put some work into um, characterizing the bottom of the scene, I decided that it might be nice to to have a little bit of lighting. So I just added this giant sphere with an emissive material that um, gets the gets the job done. And like I said, there are these rectangular lights that I kind of arrayed. Um, um, so these rectangular lights are kind of in a hexagonal array lighting the top edge of the cylinder so that I get a little bit of a hot spot on top of that. Okay, um, the, the one thing that um, I wanted to point out is for the interior of the cylinder. I used uh, what are known as decals. So if I turn this, and then you can see there are a bunch of these decal actors I created. So if I turn the decals off, you can see like you can you can see quite clearly how the material or the textures that I found. Uh, from texture.com or textures.com uh, began to tile and, and, and create um, these visible scenes um, because, you know, these things were stained and I just kind of randomly um, applied the different textures. So, you know, each one of these might have become a material that I randomly applied to uh, individual rectangles that comprise the entirety of my uh, silo. And you know we can clearly see the 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 edges of where um, each one of those tiles appears. And so what I did here was I added these decals. And decals are like um, kind of like stamped elements um, in in um, Unreal Engine. And so let me show you how to access that. Right. So again, these are finishing touches. And so you might have a uh, general material applied. Bridge. Um, you might have a general uh, material or texture applied to a surface, but you may want to add other qualities to it. So in this case, um, if we turn off the decals, you can see um, the pock marks here and some of the staining is from the original texture. But if we turn the decals on, there's a lot of these water stains that start to um, run across the tiles and the textures. And you can see like these water stains down here. Um, and it just helps break up the tiling of that material. Um, I, I, I don't mind uh, some of the tiling, but I did want to just kind of like mask or hide. And so uh, if I select these decal actors, I think I have them grouped, so I'm just gonna um, ungroup them so I can select an individual one. So if I uh, focus to this, a decal actor is just represented by this green bounding box, right? And so if I were to um, pull this out, and you can see as I move this around, I can move this like water stain back and forth. Um, 
and in and out. And wherever my geometry intersects my um, my decal bounding bo bounding box, that green box, um, it's going to just apply this masked material on top of that surface, right? And so if we go into Quixel Bridge, what I can do is search for um, like water stains, right? And I don't want stains as a surface, um, but you know, instead of doing that, maybe I'll just go in and um, click on this decals here, just so I can access just the decals that are that are um, available to me, right? And so, you know, for instance, I can take damage um, and apply them on top of like pristine concrete, for instance, and it starts to um, give the appearance of, uh, you know, these like unique moments in a otherwise tiled and repeated material, right? Um, in the case of the uh, water stains, I think maybe it's under other damage, right? There are a lot of cracks and elements, um, like literal cracks, um, but uh, just kind of like, you know, moments where you see the concrete broken up and you see the rebar uh, poking through underneath, right? These can all sort of be applied almost as a post-process effect. Oh, you know what I think it was? Blood stains is what I took. Um, in some cases, and I just changed the color from red to like brown. Um, but there should be uh, water damage. Uh, here we go. Leakage is where I got a lot of these um, um, stains from, right? So there's leakage here. Um, and you can kind of choose what, which ones you want. Um, but we bring them into Unreal exactly the same way we would, which is um, Let's try that. But you bring them in exactly the same way you would a material. You click on the download and you click on the um, export to Unreal. And you'll see here under Mega Scans, we have our 3D assets, right? So this is where I grabbed um, things like the electrical box, right? Um, so if I zoom in here, this electrical box, uh, maybe it's not this one, maybe it's this one, right? I just found this on Bridge and imported it in, and it's a 3D asset. So when I import the Megascans asset, it creates a folder for me. Um, and then surfaces are the materials that we're using that we import from, from um, Quixel. And atlases are the decal materials, right? So if we have to look at concrete leakage, for instance, we can see we have an opacity mask. Right, so we, you know, white is what's visible and black is just transparent, right? It's a masked material. And then there's the albedo or the color, right? Uh, we've been talking about materials um, in Unreal. The base color is also albedo or diffuse. Um, this would be the color of my um, leakage. And then if we look at the um, material itself, We can see um, that we only, you know, can see the the leakage part of it. Everything else is invisible. And so what happens is, um, if we go close to one of these walls, um, I can find my decal asset and drag it in, and you can see I'm given uh, just a general decal and you can kind of see that there's something going on over there right the arrow that it's pointed to i believe is the side that you want can't oh, i can never remember if it's a side that you want pointed towards you or not pointed towards you i'm going to click the local transform here and so you can kind of see the effect of that decal 
Um, and here the decal material is already set to my concrete leakage. And it might just be that um, it picked it for me because um, I had it highlighted. But if I wanted to change that decal to something else, I can just grab this material, right? I have my decal selected in my world outliner. And I'm just going to apply this different material to it. And you can see that now I have this masked concrete damage. Um, and it's just coming out black. And so maybe I do need to rotate this to the other side so that I can see. Yeah, so we want the arrow uh, pointed in towards the, towards the surface. And I'm just essentially aligning my green bounding box to uh, roughly match uh, or be perpendicular to the surface I want to apply that decal to, right? So if I wanted to um, further um, enhance or, or uh, uh, add some, um, I don't know, more atmosphere or break apart my tiling even more so, I might just toss in like this, you know, giant chunk that's been taken out of my concrete wall, right? But it's very easy to do as a decal, as opposed to um, trying to um, Photoshop that into a surface because remember those things get tiled and you'll start to see the repetition of the damage as well. And so decals allow us to kind of create these unique conditions. Um, so, um, you know, I went a little nuts with the decals. Um, if we look at just the number of decals I ended up putting, most of these are of the same, um, of the same stain, just kind of repeated and scaled at different, at different levels. But if we turn it off, we can see that it does add um, quite a bit of like grime and, and just helps to, to mask some of the um, um, scenes of my texture a little bit more, right? So use them, use them wisely, accordingly, right? Um, you may want to uh, make sure that if you're going to spend the time, um, here I'm just toggling between um, how the uh, uh, move gizmo appears. So right now the move gizmo um, is uh, orthogonal to the, the decal itself. But if I click on this, this becomes orthogonal to the world position. So I'm, you know, just moving little x, x, y, and z coordinates. And so, you know, maybe I want my decal um, to be more visible. So I might, you know, bring it in closer and uh, make it so that when I create my cinematic, and if I want to show um, this this uh, door, for instance. Um, just to kind of replicate uh, this scene a little bit, um, you know, I might make it so that it's more visible. Or if it's too distracting, you know, I might just want it to be uh, background material, like background texture. So I'll leave it out there, right? So use your use your eye and, and figure out like what it what is it that you need to do in order to sort of add the necessary um, atmosphere you want to your scene, right? Um, just these, even these subtle things, um, they do make a, a big difference in terms of the, the level of immersion, right? And so, you know, I did my cinematic based on a very um, blocked out scene and I was using um, the Unreal provided mannequins. Um, so if we look, uh, at these characters. Um, right. I was using this basic, uh, basic mannequin, um, the male and the female, uh, mannequin to kind of stand in for my, for my actors, for my characters. Right. Um, at this point you may want to, um, use different more specific characters, right? Again, adding to the, the look and feel of the, of the scene that you're creating. And um, you can find any character anywhere online, or you could even make your own actually, 
um, as a T-pose, uh, as long as it's in a T-pose, you can use uh, uh, this, this site um, called Mixamo, um, which was purchased by Adobe uh, at some point to um, find and uh, use rigged characters that you know come with a variety of, of animations, right? So I'm gonna go through an example of um, you know how to how to bring in a Mixamo character into Unreal Engine and and uh, use use the character as a playable character or as a character that you want to animate as part of your cinematic scene, right? So I liked this character um, as my torture uh, deliverer or torturer. Um, and I'm probably gonna put like a mask over her face because you know these static faces are, are definitely within the realm of the uncanny valley. And so, um, you know, this uh, little uh, baby mask here um, is a way in which we might um, kind of break free from that is to just have like a, a mask um, that's supposed to be kind of uncanny and creepy covering uh, uh, the face of this character. And what I'll do is um, go into Sketchfab and, and find a mask that I like. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as, as the one before, but there's some pretty cool mask uh, models that, that um, I might try out. Um, and just add a little creepiness to my scene. And so going back to our Mixamo, we're gonna select this character and we're gonna select a series of animations to go with. Let's try Dr. Chad. So we'll call this folder. Chad, see if Dr. Chad has the same issues as Dr. Olivia. So we want the T-pose. Um, keep that the same. Here, Chad, and this is done. So let's drag Dr. Chad here and there. And then Dr. Chad will import. Yeah, so we don't have that issue with Dr. Chad. Um, so maybe we'll just stick with Dr. Chad. There's a way of retargeting all of those bones that are not connected, but it kind of goes beyond the scope. Like, I don't want you to waste your time working on that. If there is a character that's just absolutely perfect um, and that's the character you wanna use, then um, I can go over retargeting the bones um, it's not that complicated, but again, it's just this other layer that you might not need to worry about. And so let's try to find a character that doesn't have that. Um, but like I said, if you need a specific character that um, you're having that issue with, then um, go ahead and let me know and I'll, uh, I'll figure out how to uh, guide you through that process. And so let's get some animations for Dr. Chad. I'm gonna find the idle animation. And I liked this one. So we'll download that. Except this time I'm going to do without skin because we already downloaded the skin um, and click on download. And so when we go to grab that animation. I'm going to drag this idle in here. 
into Dr. Chad's folder and then go into my Unreal Engine, add import. I'm gonna bring in this animation. And here we wanna make sure that our Chad skeleton is selected, which is CH16 on PBR. Right, CH11 was Olivia. We want to make sure to assign this animation to this particular skeleton. And then if we hit import, we can open up Dr. Chad and we can see now that the idle animation is um, set, connected to it, right? So here's our Dr. Chad. We have our idle animation and we may only need a couple more, right? So we'll want to walk animation. And so, you know, do we want him to strut? Do we want to check the in place box? Um, do we want just a basic walk? I don't want to be too, oh, walking with a briefcase. This is what I want. Because I actually want him to hold that medical bag. And here I might just kind of like widen his arm here a little bit because the bag I want him to use close this, is this. And it's a little bit wide. And so um, I think that's a little bit too much. I think that's good there. Maybe I'll we'll find a different medical bag for him. Perhaps, I don't know, um, but that's good. I'm gonna hit download again without skin, hit download. And now we have walk with briefcase. Let's just get a walk, like a basic walk in case we don't like the briefcase. So, um, standard, standard walk. In place. So I want this standard walk. So I'm going to download without skin. Um, download. And so for those of you who want a run animation as well, again, check in place. Let's grab one. I'm, I don't need one, but I want to show you how to use and make a run animation. Um, that one's good enough, right? So basic locomotion, I'm not gonna go beyond that. Standing, idle, uh, walking, and running. So let's go into our downloads folder and show our Dr. Chad folder. And so all of these are there. I'm gonna grab these three new animations and I'm gonna drag them in. I'm gonna just delete them from my downloads folder. Keep things clean. And then I'm going to import again into the Dr. Chat folder these new animations. And I'm going to make sure that CH16, which is my Dr. Chad skeleton, right? CH16 is the skeleton I'm going to apply these animations to. And I'm going to hit import all, right? So now if I go into our Dr. Chad skeletal mesh, I can go in here and see that all of his animations are also assigned and associated with Dr. Chad, and I can um, use, use him accordingly or, or have access to those animations for, for my specific needs, right? So what we're gonna do for Dr. Chad is we're going to create um, a animation, uh, Blend space 1D, right? There's blend space and blend space 1D. Blend space, um, let's just create one and select our Dr. Chad character, CH16. And I'm gonna call this uh, BS underscore for blend space, um, Dr. Chad, right? And so we have a, a another icon here, um, and if we open it up, 
we can start to access um, all of the sort of things that are associated with Dr. Chad, like the skeleton, uh, the mesh, and the materials, um, all of the animations that Dr. Chad has, and even physics, right? You can see like these little pillows uh, represent collisions on Dr. Chad's body, right? But when we click on our animation tab, you can see we have like this little window here. And so what this allows us to do is drag in our animations and depending on what is happening in the scene, right? We can go from idle to walk and then to run, right? So depending on what value we're assigning, right? This is just like a variable. We can make Dr. Chad do these things and what's nice about blend space is it's, it's actually not just turning the animation on and off, but there's like a smooth transition from that to that, the walk animation, and from walk to kind of getting faster and faster and then starting to run, right? And so it's just, um, you know, adds to the, uh, uh, the level of realism in games, right? And so what the blend space allows us to do is it allows us to, like for instance, this uh, uh, bottom set of numbers here um, might be associated with um, Dr. Chad's um, speed. So when speed is zero, he's obviously not running. If speed is 50, he's walking. And if speed is at 100, he's running, right? And so uh, let's hit save here. Um, let's find our axis, right? So we, because it's blend space 1D, we only have one axis, a horizontal axis. And what we could set here is we can just name that axis speed and set our minimum value to be 100 and our maximum value we can set to 600. And they're just the number of divisions. So if we wanted to insert an animation here or here, we would be able to do so. But we're just going with these three. Um, and the walk with briefcase, I might not need because I might just do that for my cinematic sequence, in which case I don't need that particular animation to be um, in my blend space. And so we have that set up, which are his basic um, animations. Now what we need to do is create an anim blueprint for Dr. Chad, which we'll use to control how we want um, Unreal Engine to, you know, talk to Dr. Chad's animation, right? And so we're going to go to animation, animation blueprint. Um, We're going to select Dr. Chad as the target skeleton. And I'm going to click OK and call this uh, anim bp underscore Dr. Chad. All right, and we can open that up. And we can see that this is just whatever gets output from our blueprint. Um, we're going to want a new state machine. And what we can even do here is we can just drag and just say we want Dr. Chad to just always be idle, right? So this is like a simple anim blueprint where Dr. Chad does nothing except stay idle, right? But what we might actually want is because we created a blend space for Dr. Chad, we can actually bring that in and just tell the blueprint to use this blend space depending on how that variable that we call speed is changing. So if we double click on this, right, we have our output pose based on like now it's giving us that speed variable. So let's go ahead and add a variable here called speed, right? And we'll make it a float because the light green color is a float number. And then I'm going to get that speed variable and hook it up to 
Dr. Chad's blend space. And whatever that variable is, this blend space is going to determine whether Dr. Chad is idle or walking. So we can start to kind of play with that. So if we set this to 600, we can see that Dr. Chad is running. If we set that variable to 300, Dr. Chad walks. And if we set that to zero, Dr. Chad is idle, right? And if I did say uh, 150, he's kind of like very slowly, strangely walking, right? So the blend space is working. You know? So let's set this to zero and we're gonna call this variable uh, based on this event graph. So this is a blueprint, right? And so we wanna have Unreal's uh, character um, or character animation, or we're going to use the third person um, character uh, uh, third person character template, and we're going to um, um, apply or create a new character based on that. But we're going to swap out the 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 robot for Doctor Chad. Sorry, that was a long way of saying we're just going to create a new character, right? So I'm just going to right click here and I'm going to duplicate it. And we'll call it Dr. Chad character, right? Um, what we're going to want to do, though, is we're going to want to borrow uh, certain things. So if we double click on Dr. Chad's character, we can leave all of this alone. Let's go to the viewport and let's look at our mesh. And what we're going to do here is, is swap out our character for Dr. Chad, right? Dr. Chad is in this T pose, which we don't want, because um, we want to add an animation blueprint, in which case, in, in, in this case, it's NMBP Dr. Chad, which is what we, um, what we started with. And so now I can compile this. And so at least now our uh, character appears properly. And what I might want to do is reduce the capsule component height. Um, let's set it to 85. And then I can't. Remember now where. because right, I want that bottom of the capsule to be at the bottom of Dr. Chan's feet. So let's go back to the capsule component. Ah, I think this was set at number six. Let's undo. Right, it was this. And if we look at the mesh, just have to or maybe it was at 95. Set this to 90. And then set this to minus 90. So now it's a little bit closer to Dr. Chad's height. And the bottom of that capsule is aligning to, to his feet. Right? So we want to set the character's position to be uh, the negative height or half height of the, of the capsule. So this uh, capsule is uh, 180 centimeters, um, which is like the average size or average height of, I guess it's a fairly tall person. Um, and so that's all we need to do here. Um, we want to uh, add some animation and um, we can go to um, the mannequin and we're going to want to take the third person and in blueprint. And we're just gonna steal some stuff, right? Basically want to steal this stuff from our third person and in blueprint. So control C, go into Dr. Chad, control V, and we're just going to put this up. And we wanna set speed variable. So now if we hit apply, um, 
sometimes this happens where you just need to uncheck it and then recheck it. Still not working. What is it saying here? Not be found game character. So what I'm going to do is just bypass. Well, you know what? I'll keep it because some of you might want the character to jump. So this is an air Boolean is um, necessary for um, jumping. So the character uh, defaults um, can recognize when the character is like not on the ground and will then allow you to play a, a specific animation for that. So rather than disconnecting it, because some of you might want to have the character jump, let's just create air Boolean variable. And hopefully that fixes it. So let's then set So hopefully that takes care of that. So now we have a new character, right, Dr. Chad. I'm going to drag Dr. Chad into our scene, right? I'm going to um, set my Dr. Chad character to be the character that I possess. And I'm going to preview and select the viewport. And so now you can see Dr. Chad can run through my scene. So I can play as Dr. Chad, right? Now, if I hit space, you can see Dr. Chad just kind of like, there's no animation associated with it because I didn't create one, right? So I actually don't want Dr. Chad to be able to jump. So I can just go in here, go back to the Dr. Chad character. Um, so again, in the character blueprint, I can go to my event graph and look for uh, jump and disconnect it because I do not want Dr. Chad to be able to jump in this case, right? Otherwise, I can connect this and have jump animations um, that I build into my blend space here. So if I click on the state machine, I might have a jump animation that I'll attach here. Should I just do it? Since you might want to jump. Let's find here. So let's download this one without skin. I'm going to show you what. We'll just give Dr. Chad the ability to jump. Um, let's do jump. Let's take our jump. Like that. I don't know if we need the landing. Falling to land. Maybe this is a little overkill, but let's go ahead and grab those three animations. Mm -hmm. 
let's bring those into Unreal. But first, in the spirit of organization, I'm going to grab these three, drag them into my character asset, and get them out of my downloads folder. Go into Unreal, right? Go to my Dr. Chad folder. I'm going to bring those animations in here. Uh, import. And so there's falling, falling to landing, and jumping. So I'm going to bring those in. Make sure that they're associated with CH16, which is Dr. Chad, and hit import all. Right. So now if I go into my Dr. Chad skeletal mesh, and click on the animations, we'll see that I have this. these animations are now all associated with Dr. Chad. Right. Falling, falling to landing. Um, so that's what we want. So let's go back to our anim blueprint for Dr. Chad. And we now actually can use this. Um, so the blend space is going to control the main movement from standing still to walking and to running, right? But we're going to want the animation sequence to go from jumping to falling and then to falling to landing, right? So we're going to create these transitions. And we're going to cycle then back to the blend space, right? So we got to determine what's triggering this animation, right? So we're going to get this variable. And if Dr. Chad is in the air, we're going to play that jumping animation, right? And then let's go back to the state machine. So now we're playing our jumping animation. So how do we then get from jumping to falling? Well, what we can do is um, I think, well, we want it to just play the animation. And once the animation stops, we want that transition to take place. And so um, how much, what character or what? sort of function is that. I don't remember what it's called, sorry. Um, here we go, animation. Let's try end. Okay, I'm going to pause the video here and uh, look that up um, so you don't have to watch me scramble here. So the, what I was looking for is under asset player. And what this allows us to do is um, create uh, a condition based on uh, certain aspects of, of um, uh, the, the animation that we're, that, that's in question. So um, the, the jumping animation, um, so if we select, for instance, um, the, the time remaining, so we can set a specific time remaining of the animation um, to then trigger this transition. Um, uh, the, the tutorial that I'm going to link you to uses the current time, uh, or rather the time remaining ratio. Um, to then create a less, less than condition 
So if the time remaining ratio is less than say 0.2, um, or there's less than 0.2 uh, or 20% of the, the animation remaining, then switch to the next or transition to the next animation, right? So we can play around with what this value is and hit compile. Um, let's go back to the state machine. I don't know why we're getting this error. So it's saying the falling to then, oh, it's because we haven't set these yet, right? Let's go into this transition and do something very similar. again connect that and then go back to this one and that transition will take place when the when this boolean is not active. So when it when the player is not in the air, um, it'll play that animation. We actually don't want that, and I'll just I'll show you why in a second. Right. So let's go back. So we're in the blend space. So it's walk, idle, or run. And if I hit the space, the space bar then the character will be in the air and this will create um, a transition into this jumping animation. When 20% of that video remains, will, or animation remains, will then go into the falling animation. And then when the player is, uh, and after 20% of this animation is remaining, there's going to be a landing animation that gets played. And then we'll transition back to Dr. Chad's blend space once we're no longer in the air. Okay, so let's give that a shot and see. We're gonna have to adjust the timing of this a bit. And so um, we're gonna have to reconnect those and see how this works. So now we have, right? And we can see that the timing of this is, is a little bit off because uh, Dr. Chad's Jumping is happening um, too slowly in relation to uh, the animations that are playing, right? And so I think what we really want to do is let's get rid of this guy and just go straight into the falling animation. And we'll set this play. Chat just basically jumps. And then the landing sequence is happening a little bit too soon. So um, this is where you just kind of have to trial and error um, and see how that goes. So maybe we want this animation to play a little longer. So 
So let's try setting let's try setting this. Well, it'll never be less than zero. So one, let's see what that looks like. So if that doesn't work, I'm just gonna go in the opposite direction. The other thing uh, I might just try is to go back and should we just try doing this? And see what that looks like. So is in air. This might end up actually looking the best. Now, if I jump, uh, yeah. Let's go to the phone. is in air. I'm going to delete this. This will be the time remaining ratio. Less than, and let's try a bigger number. Let's see what happens. What that ratio actually means. So let's hit play. That's not what I want. To one again, I think I'm okay with this. The last thing I might try, oops, let's try the jumping. This is a Boolean. Going to delete this, transition this, and the time remaining. Ratio. We get some of the jumping up animation. So he's in the air before the animation plays. And so that's the problem. We want to then play this animation from a different point. You know what, I'm just gonna make my life 
easier. Just keep it the way it was. I think that looks okay, especially since I don't want him to jump anyway. So you guys can figure out how you want your character to look when they jump, find some different animations, uh, different falling animations. If you wanna do like a sequence where he tumbles, you can kind of work, work out the logic for what that might begin to look like and, and, and try, that, um, um, try that out uh, using, using this sort of logic chain of uh, cause and effect events that are driven by these variables okay um for me i don't want him to jump so i'm just going to uncheck this but you know now i know that he has the ability to jump and so i just want him to actually not even run but if i hit the space bar nothing happens because i just turned off that functionality if i want him to go slower i can just go into the character movement here and i'm just going to change the walk speed for the maximum speed to 300 and hit compile and hit play. And now he should just walk. And you can kind of see his feet are moving faster than his, um, or his feet are moving slower than his body. So I'm gonna just adjust these values as well. Um, so in the Dr. Chad character, I might reduce the um, speed even further and set this to looks like 250. And here you're syncing the movement. Huh. I see what's going on. So, so what this is gonna lead me to do is change Dr. Chad's um, lens space. Um, Go into BS Dr. Chad, and I'm going to move this walk animation to happen much quicker. If I hit save now, this looks a lot better. His feet are still sliding ever so slightly too fast. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce in Dr. Chad's character. I'm going to reduce his speed a little bit further. Let's try 225, 220, play. Um, and so because I don't want Dr. Chad to run, what I'm going to do in the blend space here is delete that run animation, move his walk animation all the way to the end. I'm just going to match this to 220. I'm matching the speed that I'm giving him. I'm just trying to visually match the speed that he's walking with his actual position. So his feet are still sliding forward. So let's go to Dr. Chad, right? This is just gonna be trial and error. Um, I'm gonna set his walk speed to 200. And in the blend space, I'm also gonna set this variable to match. Now, if I hit play, his feet are still kind of sliding, but not as much. So let's try 180. And back to his max walk speed. 
set it to the main compile play. Still sliding a little bit over, but much closer than it was before, right? So play around with that, you know, synchronize its movement. There's a thing called root motion animation where the movement of the root drives the speed that the character is going. You can do some YouTube searches for that. Um, uh, it requires a, a little bit of a different um, a blueprint for uh, the character animation, but um, you probably, uh, it probably won't be too difficult to get that to work. Um, this is, you know, one way of doing it. There's probably a dozen different ways you might uh, animate a character. Um, but, you know, I think this is the, the simplest and fastest way. It just requires a little bit of tweaking to get the appearance of, of the, the speed of the animation to match the, the actual speed of the movement. So play around with that. I might slow this character down a little bit further just to make sure that it's like as close to um, as close as possible to to looking correct. Okay, um, so that's creating characters, and let's pause the video here, um, and I'll move on to a different topic um, when we get back. Okay, so at this point, I have um, added a few characters. Um, actually, in spite of the fact that I got those error messages about the um, weighted bones, um, this Dr. Olivia character seems to be working fine. So if I hit play, um, I can basically uh, possess Dr. Olivia and just, um, she's, she's working just fine. So um, don't worry about it if you get that error message, as long as you're doing the basic uh, walking and uh, running or jumping animations right and then the other thing i did was i created a couple of soldier characters so if i you know possessed one of these soldiers instead of dr olivia i could also hit play and you know here we go the doc see i didn't set up the blend animate or um, the the movement animations yet so he's just kind of like sliding like a like a strange ghost. Um, right now, the only animation that's set is um, the idle animation. So if we wanted to fix that, I can go into my guard. I essentially have two um, um, two animation blueprints for my guard. Um, so here's guard one. Um, this is more or less a repeat of what we did. I'm going to copy and paste. Um, the animations from the previous, uh, uh, from the Un Unreal Engine template, basically. And I'm going to connect that. I'm going to get rid of the is an air Boolean. And I'm going to get rid of all of this because I'm not going to have this character jump. And I need to create a new float variable called speed. And I'm going to change it to a float, change variable type. And I'm going to set that variable here. Um, I'm going to link to this. I could have probably kept that same you note know, because it's got the same name, but whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm going to compile. Right. Now I'm going to copy this now. And so this is my guard one animation blueprint. We have our blend space for the guard. Um, I'm going to go to my guard two animation blueprint. Go to the event graph. Hit Control V. Connect this up. Create a speed. Speed variable as a float. Change variable type. Okay. And then hit compile, right? I didn't actually have to change that, so it's all working now. 
So now if I hit play, I should be able to. Um, let's go into our character blueprint. Character movement. Our walk speed is 160. There's something wrong in the animation blueprint. So um, we are guard one. So let's go to animation. Guard one. Ah, this is what we need to do. Double click on this. We need to actually get this speed variable here and then hook it up. And let's do the same for guard two. Let's go, go to the state machine, double click on the blend space that we created. And then let's get that speed variable so that the blend space could use it to set those animations. Now, if we hit play, we'll see our guard is actually walking. So when I hit the forward button, our guard is um, essentially um, uh, feeding that speed variable based on the input axes that we've set up. Um, the cards are actually a little bit slower than, um, than the other characters. So, so if we look at a guard character, um, he's kind of like miming a, a rifle. And so what we're going to want to do is to, you know, con continue with the um, the theme, I told you, I don't like guns and scenes, but you know, in this case, I guess it's appropriate. Um, I also added a couple of lights here, so I can, you can see the two spotlights that were added and it's toggling game mode on and off by hitting the G key. Um, there are a couple of, of, of rifle slots for these guys, and I picked two different idle animations on the same skeletal mesh, so they just look like they're individuals as opposed to just duplicates or clones of one another. Um, so I went into Sketchfab and um, found some, some guns. Um, and I think what I just ended up doing was downloading this basic um, M16 rifle. Um, no need to get cute beyond beyond that. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, move some stuff around here and bring that um, rifle into my scene. So I'll pause the video and show you um, once I'm there. So like I said, I, you know, the guards are pantomiming holding weapons um, or holding a gun. And so I just went to Sketchfab and <laughs> There's an incredible number of guns, sadly, available for video gaming purposes. Um, but anyway, here's a very basic M16 rifle um, that seems pretty appropriate for this character. So I'm going to select my guard character folder, and I'm just going to import that asset. Right? I downloaded the zip file and unpacked it. And so I'm just going to import this M16 rifle from the source location. And note that we have the textures for the gun as well, which will um, apply once we get the, uh, the actual gun into place. So let's import all. And so we end up with uh, multiple pieces actually of this and then a material slot, right?